Jesus is warning his disciples that in the world he's, they're going to encounter a lot of problems. As I was reflecting, I was thinking back upon my almost 75 years of life and how many uh, popes I've lived under. You know, I was born during the pontificate of Pius XII. He was elected basically in 1939 after the death of Pius XI, and the world was in turmoil. The uh, Nazis had invaded many lands, the world was at war, and he was trying to save the church and keep it stable in a, in a government that was very hostile to all religion. And he did the best he could to do that. But he was also vilified because people say he didn't do enough to, uh, to uh, speak out against the Nazis or to save the Jews. That is one of the reasons why they're having trouble making him saint, because of, the, because of what he did or did not do. Well, history will tell, tell us what's going on, but he was vilified for that. But people forget some of the great things he did, and among them was is that he gave Catholic scripture scholars permission to talk to Lutheran scripture scholars, which led to the eventual breaking open of the scripture so that all of us will be accessible to all the church people. We have our scripture study here today because partly because of the push of Pius XII. Let history, but again, he was, oh, people don't remember the good he did. And then of course we have good Pope John who destroyed the church. He changed the literature. Oh, he gave, made it accessible to people. He allowed women in the sanctuary. Out, ladies. <laughs> but what he did was he saw the church could no longer live in the past, and he wanted to restore it to the way the first disciples had it, where people participated, people shared what they had, People were empowered to proclaim the gospel. It was just the priests and the bishops who, who proclaimed the gospel. We didn't trust you. And he said, no, we are all God's children. We are all worthy, and we were all baptized into the priesthood of Christ, and each one of us has a mission. Following him was Paul VI. He was vilified for humanity vitae. But he's also the one who helped change and bring about the reform of the church. Very cautious man, yes, he was called the Pope of No. So the people put him down for that. But if you look at, he was a very quiet man who went about his work. And he's the one who did his best to speak before the United Nations to end nuclear armaments. How many remember that? Following him was John, the tw John Paul I, who only lived a couple weeks. Now, some people say they killed, but I think it was incompetence that killed him. You don't tell the, doc the Pope he needs a, a doctor. That's at least what's coming out. So we'd never know what John Paul I was going to do. But John Paul II comes along. Yet, you know what? He did great things. He, Gorbachev, Reagan, and Lakluelsa, helped bring down communism and opened up the East, tore down the Iron Curtain. But people remember him as a hard-hearted, strong, dogmatic person. Then we have Benedict, who was actually a theologian. He was a great pope, but he was more of an intellectual. So he didn't have the charism of some of the other popes. But he was fine with, he is fine with that, he's still alive. But then he had the audacity to resign. He didn't have the courage to die in office. So he's being vilified. And then of course, because he's still alive, Francis is not Pope. Isn't that wonderful? We we'll go back to the gospel. Jesus warned us that that was gonna happen, that people will be vilified. But look at what Francis has done. He's a real pastor. He's trying to reach out to all God's people, to especially bring the marginalized. You know, he, he's very, he's very uh, orthodox, if you want to talk about it, but he has a way of doing it in such a way that he takes people off guard. But if you look at his, his papacy, he's really a churchman who believes that 
that the Holy Spirit is alive. And I think one of the issues we've done is, is that in today's gospel, Jesus says, yes, you'll be vilified, but remember the Holy Spirit is at work. And when the Holy Spirit is at work and we believe that the Holy Spirit is at work, then the church remains good. Sure, we've made our mistakes in the past, and we will continue to make mistakes as human beings, but the church is always guided by the Holy Spirit. It's said in the scripture that one of the greatest sins is to not deny the Spirit's work among us. Let us pray for the people who only want to see the negative side of people, that they might know that people are basically good human beings. The other side of the coin, too, is, is that this Father Jerry and I were at a, at a meeting with a group of priests, and one of them said, we can't wait for your generation to die so we can recapture the church as it should be. And I said, good luck, kiddo, to myself. The Barrett and the Higginses live into their 80s and 90s, and I was only in my 60s at the time. Yes. So let us be a church that recognizes our faults and knows that we will be persecuted for our beliefs but we are guided by the Holy Spirit and we will continue to be strong and maybe live a old age. Hello, OLPH. My name is Mary Lynn Januszewski and I'm the Director of Finance and Operations at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish in Glenview, Illinois. And this message comes to you with heartfelt gratitude and thanks for your ongoing generosity and support of OLPH Parish. This overwhelming generosity allows us to continue to serve and to minister to the parish community in so many different ways. So thank you, OLPH, for all you do. You are much appreciated.